line. Consider a system similar to the one in figure 16.8, except that it contains six particles instead of four. What is the probability of having all the particles in only one of the two boxes in the case? Okay, so before we read on, let's just answer this question. We're talking about probability here, right? So a little bit of math. Now, in order to find out the probability of having all the particles in only one of the two boxes in the case, a probability value is basically a fraction. Probability is basically a ratio of sorts in which it's something that you're asking divided by the total outcomes, the total possible outcomes, right? Kind of like if you flip a coin, right? What's the probability that you would get a tails? Well, before I, before I even go into that, let's just write out the, the top one here, right? Probability always equals, we'll say special case divided by the total number of outcomes. So when we flip a coin and we want tails, right? The special case was you wanted a tail. Well, if you flip a coin, you get two possible outcomes. That's the total number. So maybe I'll just say probability equals the total number of outcomes is, well, I either get my tails or I get my heads. So that would be two on the bottom. But my special case is I just want to know what the probability is of getting a tail. And the tail is only one out of the two outcomes. So that special case, the tail, would just be the one. And one divided by two is a half. And if you just turn it into a percentage, that would be 50%. 50% of flipping and getting tails. Now... We just want to find out what's the probability of having all the particles in only one of the two boxes in the case. Okay. So we might be able to answer the top number. What is that special case? We want all those particles in only one of the two boxes in the case. So if we look at figure 16.8, which is down here, we can kind of see how many times. The particles are only in one box. Now, if we look at the top here, all of the particles are only in one box here. There is none in the next box. So this checks out. Does this happen again? Yeah, it happens down here, right? Here is another case that fits what we were talking about, in which they're all in this box now. So that checks out. Now, for all the other microstates, right, we don't have that. Those balls are divvied up between the two boxes. And let's just see. It says, what's the probability of having all the particles in only one of the two boxes? It does not matter whether there's four, four balls in this case or six particles or six balls in our case, right? I could just add you know, two extra boxes, and it would basically be the same thing. You only have two shots for this. So our special case would be a total of two. But now how are we going to find out the total outcomes? Well, here comes the formula, right? In order to find the total number of outcomes, it's always two raised to the n. And the n value is your total number of, we'll call them, particles in this in this case, right? So our n value is the total number of particles. So how many total possibilities can I have to randomize those balls? Two to the six in our case. If we actually did the math here, there's four total balls. So this would be two to the fourth. And if we just did the math, 2 to the 4th is 16. If we calculated, or if we just added, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, blah, 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 you will see that there's 16 total outcomes here. But we, since we have 2 to the 6, we have 6 particles, we need to find out 
What's the total number of possibilities? 2 raised to the 6 is 64. That kind of makes sense. More particles, more possibilities. So this would be 2 divided by 64. If we actually simplified this, right, 64, I could divide both numbers by 2. And if I do that, divided by 2, divided by 2, this would technically be 1 over 32. And that's the answer to the first part. What's the probability? You have a 1 in 32 shot. That's how we read this. You have a 1 in 32 shot that all the particles will be in only one out of the two boxes. Now, it says compare this with the similar probability for the system of the four particles that were derived to be equal to one eighth. What does this comparison tell us about even larger systems? So basically with four particles, we have a one in eight shot that that's gonna happen. In six particles, we have a one and 32 chance of the same thing happening. And if we compare these values, right, 1 eighth versus 1 over 32, 1 eighth is much larger than 1 over 32. So what does this comparison tell us about even larger systems? So if we even increase this up, right, to be even larger, like, you know, 20 or 200, right? This probability would be even even smaller. So to sum it up, the higher the number of particles, the less probability, you know, of whatever your special case is, right? So the higher the particles, and that's for, you know, the larger systems, your probability will decrease because there's just so many different outcomes, mainly because you have so many different particles. And that is it. There you go. All right. I really hope this helped. What, uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel and I will talk to you all in future lessons. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.